Hey everybody, this is just going to be a quick video showing the redraft of my Rebel team. Lots of you followed the run through season one of Rebel. Um, Rebel, I think, is the biggest Blood Bowl 3 league. It used to be the biggest Blood Bowl 2 league, but uh, has shrunk from its Blood Bowl 2 heyday when it was about almost a thousand players at one point, but it was still close to 200 in its first season. I think it was like 180 players in its first season of Blood Bowl 3. So a huge league in which we played our misspelled tees. Wood Elf team, we got through to the last 16. Sadly, that was where the run ended. But I know a lot of you enjoyed watching the run on YouTube and Twitch. And uh, we are going to be bringing the team back for next season. So uh, we're going to go through the Rebel redraft process because Blood Bowl 3 has not itself implemented the redraft process from the rulebook, the 2020 rulebook, but Rebel have created it themselves because Rebel has amazing tech people behind the scenes who do cool things like this. So let's go through the steps of redrafting our Rebel team. This is what it looked like after our crushing last 16 exit. We had quite a few MNGs coming up. I don't have to worry about those with the, the redraft, but actually the core of the team was pretty healthy. We've got our ward answers and our catches are all healthy so that's a good starting point um and i did after that last game uh at the end of that last game i did in um i did random a couple of levels because i knew i was going to redraft and technically your skill progression should be part of your post game sequence so you're not going to get to spend any spp between the redraft and the start of the new season so I did some random skills to see if anyone got lucky enough that we want to keep them. And in fact, one player did. We probably will keep that random dirty player. So um, let's uh, go into it. So we hit redraft. The team is ready to redraft. Start redraft. Uh, be sure to have bought what you need. The redraft process only allows for removing improvements, not increasing them. You can't buy rerolls, assistant coaches, cheerleaders, and apothecary during redraft. I think that means you can keep the ones you have, um, but you can't add. I'm not totally sure. Or if that was just saying that you do the redraft section first and then you buy those afterwards. Make sure you are finished with picking skills, since picking skills should be part of the post match sequence. You, yes. That's what I was just saying. So I did my my all my skill picking. We're not going to add any more skills to players after this point. You will not be allowed to skill players between the start of redraft and the um, post-match of game one of next season. This can't be enforced by the client, but rebel.net will keep track of your players. The site and the community are watching you. If you do skill a player in this period, you'll be forced to recreate the player and any random skill advantages are forfeited. So on we go. Proceed. So the way to redraft works is you get to um, uh, keep players that you like, but there is a redraft cost added to um, their value. So because this is cumulative and builds up every season, it adds 20k to the player's cost to buy every season. Because this was the first season of Rebel, any player I want to keep is going to cost me 20k more than their value. So everyone's only one season old. So what this means in effect is you're going to want to keep your star players, but you don't want to keep random players. Because if I keep Dodgy Link, for instance, I will pay 90,000 for a 70,000 player with no skills. Now, you might look at it at the end and say, well, I've got the cash to do that anyway. But you still don't want to do it because what if Dodgy Link ends up getting some good skills and then at the end of next season, you think oh, I'd want to keep them? Well, instead of being a 90,000 player at the end of next season, that will be a 110,000 player. So you really do only want to keep the players who are good here. You shouldn't keep the players who aren't worth keeping, even if you have cash left over. So for that reason, who do we want to redraft? We definitely want to redraft Earl Gaudet. Uh We definitely want to re redraft Lady Gaudet. Um Both of these are our two ward answers. We had a Mighty Bow Tackle. We have a Juggernaut Frenzy. Those are the core of the team, so we definitely want to keep hold of those. Uh, we're definitely going to want to redraft our Movement 9 catcher, called Catcher. And we, because um, we're building that obviously towards being a one-turner, um, it's already a one-turner, but we can make it even better. Um, 
this was a random selected after the last game and I think we definitely want to redraft this because that's the only random skill we've taken um, that's good basically. It's a good random skill so even though we're paying 100,000 to keep them, um, their team value will certainly be 80,000 because we got that random so Reblox will be a nice player to have next season. And I think after that the only one we will keep is Greed T. Greed T we did pay full price for block but you know what? A block catch is nice to have around. Um, they probably aren't going to be a priority for the Apo next season because it's more important players. Um, and next season, if they survive to the end, they might end up being quite expensive. But I think that's thinking too much ahead. Um, those are the players we want to keep. So I think in general, that's before I've even thought about my budget, those are really the only players I want to keep because two SBP on a tree is not enough for a reason to pay this tax I think we can buy a fresh tree with exactly the same and not worry about at the end of next season they might cost 160 um powerpoint has no SPP, so again we can just buy powerpoint for 90,000 and not have this tax adding on for next season throws I ran at the end of the season I think that's Hail Mary pass whatever it is it's a skill I don't want and I don't think pro is good enough to keep GFI ginger tier GFI entity around I think again I might as well just get a fresh line of 70,000 so I think those are all the players that I want um and then we need to buy the rest of the roster uh from down here so you can see we've already got three rerolls and the apothecary on here so I guess we just keep those and then we need to finish out our roster so we've got 1590 is our budget the budget is calculated from a combination of the number of games you played, the number of wins and draws you've got. I don't know the exact mathematical calculation. It's in the rulebook. Uh, Rebel has just followed the Blood Bowl 2020 rulebook, but that is the cost. So we've currently got one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four, five players, three rerolls and an apothecary for 990,000. That means we've got 600,000 to buy a minimum of six more players. So we're going to buy a, it shouldn't be a problem. So we're going to buy a Trima. We're going to buy, um, well, let's just check it for ourselves. So right now we're on one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I just bought Lineman, that would take me to 1460. Um, I think I definitely want a bench. And I think I would like to get a thrower to start developing. So let's buy a thrower. That takes us to 15, 55, 12 players with a thrower. It's probably going to gonna be where we sit, I think. Um, I am definitely interested in getting a 4-3 roll. But they said you can't buy rerolls in the redraft. Um, and I'm slightly confused about that because we've got the option here. I don't know if that means you can reduce rerolls, but you can't add to them because you definitely can't reduce rerolls during the season so maybe this is the one time when I'm allowed to reduce rerolls if I want to um I uh but it did say very specifically we're not allowed to buy rerolls so I'm not going to buy a reroll um we will keep our rerolls that we've got we'll keep our apothecary what other choices do I have here if I don't buy this thrower we could, I think we still couldn't afford to go to 13 players, could we? No, we'd be 10,000 short of going to uh, 13 players. If I could get to 13 players, I might think about doing that instead of getting the thrower. But so we can't do that. So we go here and we go to the thrower back. What we can do, actually, I think I'm going to do is uh, drop one of these linemen and take another catcher. So that means we've got actually pretty much back to where we were on the roster. We've actually pretty much just kept exactly the roster we had minus one player. Because we've got, we're buying a new tree to replace the tree we're not keeping. We're buying a catch to replace catch we're not keeping. A thrower to replace the thrower we're not keeping. And so all we do is reduce from 13 players to 12. We've got 15,000 left over. You don't get to keep that money. The money once uh, once you redraft, what you don't spend is lost. But um, I think I'm pretty happy with that going into next season. I would say there's two things that I would want in my ideal version of the roster, which are the 13th player and the fourth reroll. Um, fourth reroll, though, I really just want that for playoffs. That was a, a big 
thought I had at the end of playoffs and those of you who watched on Twitch will have seen this, those of you who watch on um on YouTube didn't see this, but I had my Rebel playoff game and another playoff game in, in Chalice very close to each other. Um and in both games I played twenty four turns and uh in both games came out on the losing side and in both games I thought an extra reroll would have been very, very handy. So I do think for playoffs I want four rerolls. And I was trying to get the th the thrower to leader to be the fourth reroll last season, which didn't happen. I think um, if I had my time again with Rebel playoffs, I would have just bought the fourth reroll because I think it would have made the world of difference in that game we lost. But can't can't change things that have already happened. So this is what the team will look like going into next season. I'm pretty happy with this to start the season. We've got two great ward answers. We've got the uh, best catcher we've got the um block catcher we've got a, a a cheap fowler and we've got 12 players with all the positions we want i'm going to do a quick screen grab for myself just because i want to remember all these names so i don't lose them because i'm going to keep these great names because they're good names and uh well i was going to hit confirm oh no what's mock draft Oh, that was a mock version just to test things. Okay, so now I can do it for real. Okay, all right. Bam, bam, bam. Make sure I do the same ones again. Not you, you and you. So we kept those five. We bought the one. We bought one of you. We bought one of you. And we bought four of you. There you go. Uh, I didn't raise those mock draft pattern. Um, so that was just, I guess, a safety measure to make sure we didn't misclick and say we were finished when we weren't. But I'm really very sure this is what I want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. Three rerolls, one apothecary. Done. You're about to confirm your redraft. If you continue, the following will happen in game. Your team will have its rerolls, cheerleaders, assistant coaches, and apothecary adjusted if necessary. Injuries on players in game will be adjusted to according to the draft result. Cash will be awarded to your team to buy new rookies. Okay, so we have to do the manual buying of the rookies. Please observe that there's a one to two minute delay between Rebel.net having confirmed the redraft and necessary changes being applied in game. Don't forget to sack players need sacking and to complete redraft on Rebel.net by validating against the in game changes. Okay, proceed. I just want to say, like, this is insane to me. Like, it's insane to me that I can go on this website that Rebel made and this website is talking to Blood Bowl and making changes in-game. Like, that's wild. Like, that's even possible. Um, and Rebel is... Rebel's just very cool for that. Like, the tech, the tech people and the skills they have to do these things is bonkers. Um... Yeah, Major Bite is a mad genius. I mean, I, I think they do chat a bit, Blood Bowl Night. Like, I do think there's been back and forth conversations, but I feel like they should use him more because he's amazing. Uh, okay, so we are not done with this yet. Um, so, waiting for it to update. Uh, so, um, we didn't get the five second call night experience. Just to say as well, when I was talking about the redraft budget you have before, the bit I forgot to say is that this cash in our team treasury also counted towards the redraft budget. So we did have that 200,000 saved, which helped as well to have all the money we wanted. And in fact, like just enough, I think I would have been definitely sad to have to start next season on 11 players. So it was really nice that we had exactly the right amount there to do um, 12 players with all the positionals kept. It, it does get harder the longer you play in a redraft system because every season your good players get more expensive. Although having said that, as elves, probably some of these will die between now and next season because while we didn't get all the luck we wanted in all the games we wanted, we definitely did get lucky to not have any permanent injuries on any of our key players, really. Um Okay, so that has, something has happened. 
okay so what's happened is cool neat so there's responsibility on the coach here i guess to uh to make to do things so what's happened in game is our budget has been topped up to the amount we're going to need to buy all the rookies and um mngs have been cleared and uh i guess now we need to manually fire the players we want to get rid of and replace them is how that works i trust that's correct cornite <laughs> It's what seems like the thing to do to me. Makes sense with the budget that's there. Uh, so yeah. All right. So we will do these one at a time. So we didn't need to do the screen grab because we can just do it this way. So we say goodbye to tree. And because it's fun to keep track of these things, I'm going to name it tree the second. So I will know how many, how many editions of tree I've gone through. Oh, oh damn it. I hate the back screens here. So the longer the team lives, we'll know exactly how long we've had, how many different versions of players we've gone through. Um, so we're keeping all of those. We're not keeping PowerPoint. Feels a bit weird, like deleting players, then replacing them with identical players, but it makes sense because this will mean it's all trackable for Rebel Systems. So you just delete and replace so that they are updated into new players who don't have that season of experience. And so their redraft value will not go up accordingly. Okay, so we have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're keeping Reblux. So it's everyone from here. One, so it's eight. So we need to do four of these we're going to keep around. So which name are we going to lose for now? I think GFI Injury. I think that's the weakest of those names. get myself copy there English breaks fast the second next one is matey oh feels painful saying goodbye to matey but he'll be back Why does that back button there take you all the way out of the screen? Like, how can that be sensible? Who's halfway through adding to their roster and wants to go back to the main screen? Kick on gameplay rather than back. I seem to have got out correctly this time, I'm not sure how. Uh, and then click players there, I guess. Dot Jiling and last one, Leap Sang Sushang. Leap Sang Su Xiong the second. Bam. And there you have it. It has worked exactly right on the budget. So we've got all the money spent, which is what they want. So you haven't got money to spend for next season. As I said before, we are now not allowed to spend these SVP. All these SVP are um, frozen until after our first game of next season. Um, and uh, that is what our team will look like going into next season. Now, 
I am signing up to the Big O conference. Um, for anyone who's got this far who's not familiar with Rebel, Rebel is split into three conferences. There it's a European time zone conference and a North American time zone conference and an Australasian time zone conference. I always play in the Australasian because I work unusual hours. Um, and uh, I, uh, I know that, um, I was gonna say spoiler alert, but by the time you watch this, it probably isn't even spoilers. Um, I know that one of the, um, another player from the Australia, Australasian conference is headed to the final of season one, Blood Bowl three. So I will certainly be, because I did well last season, in the top division of the Australasian conference, which means I will have an orc team that was either the reigning champion of Rebel or is the uh, runner-up of Rebel in my division. So it's going to be a tough division next season for sure. We're going to have some serious competition at the top of it, which I'm actually really looking forward to. I think, uh, um, I think Rebel's really great for that, the way it's structured itself and, and gives you the chance to get promoted and have... You get more playoff chances in the higher divisions, but you also have tougher games to play, and I like that. That's fun. So I'm looking forward to it, um, and uh, looking forward to bringing this team back because we had a lot of fun with them in season one. So that's the redraft done, um, and uh, I will start the new season games for YouTube on a new playlist once they start. But for now, if you've enjoyed this. As always, please do hit that like and subscribe.